Welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today, let us discuss about one of the most important sign in neurology, especially in emergency room, most of the time patient will be unconscious. We will not be knowing whether it's a neurological cause or something else. Webinski sign, we cannot, uh, uh, we cannot tell that Webinski sign is seen only in stroke, but it's a hardcore sign of stroke. So, we will be discussing about Babinski sign now. There are some alternatives also, but uh, in clinical practice, Babinski sign, that sign is the best sign to uh, elicit or to document a major neurological disorder like stroke or pyramidal tract lesion. It is not only in stroke, it is it indicates a pyramidal tract lesion. You can see that Babinski sign how, how you are going to elicit that is very important. You have to slightly hold the leg. You should not put more pressure on that. You will be stroking on the lateral aspect of the toe like this and you will reach up to the toe. So, this is the toe line. So, you should never cross to that area. That area if you cross that uh, the reflex will be altered. So, there is normally there will be a flexion of toes. You can see the, if you are a normal person, toe will flex and all the uh, uh, other toes, great toe and all other toes will be closing together. They all come together and they will flex. And here also there will be a flexion. Okay. So, that is dorsiflexion. The leg will be or foot will be flex towards the uh, uh, like uh, down part that, that uh, uh, sole part of the leg. So, that is a flexion of toes you see normally, but if the patient is having a pyramidal tract lesion, the great toe will flex, all other toes also will flex, but they will be fanning out. So, they will spread out and the great toe will be uh, flexed, uh, uh, plantar extension will be there. So, they will be extended or plantar extension will be there. This area also will be, that is angle joint also will be flexed. We will be, see we'll be seeing the video last. So, the examiner strokes the patient foot starting laterally at the heel and moving up crossing medially at the metatarsal head area. Do not touch the first metatarsal area. That is what I told. Do not cross to that first metatarsal area. So, you can see if there is a pyramidal tract lesion, there will be plantar uh, uh, flexion and fanning of all other toes you can see. If, suppose if, if Babinski sign is present, you have to tell Babinski sign is present. Never write Babinski sign is positive or negative. Babinski sign means it is a sign. It cannot be present or absent. Bab, sorry, it cannot be positive or negative. So, Babinski sign present means the big toe extends that is dorsiflexion and the other toes extend that is also dorsiflexion and fan outwards. Upward movement of the great toe is pathological. It is caused by the contraction of extensor halysis longus muscle. Contraction of this extensor halysis longus muscle, it is occurring synchronously with reflex activity of other flexor muscles. That is very important. So, this is a universal flexor response. That is very important. So, when you are seeing the leg, so, this is the body of the patient. So, here there will be flexion, here there will be flexion, leg. So, toe will be, so you have already seen that toe is dorsiflexed. Toe is dorsiflexed, angle is flexed, knee is flexed, hip is flexed. So, that is a universal flexion response during the uh, elicitation of the reflex that is very important. So, if 
Suppose that is a true Babinski, repeatedly even if you do one or two times, it will be same response. But in a patient who is having agitated or uh, is anxious, there will be voluntary withdrawal. But after some few strokes, that anxiety or agitation may not be similar, it may be different. So, this reflex is a universal flexion response, that is very important, you should remember it is a universal flexion response. Dorsiflexion, normally you get a plantar flexion if the, uh, there is no pyramidal tract lesion, but here toes will be dorsiflexed, ankle will be flexed, knee will be flexed, hip will be flexed. So that is why we call it as universal flexion response. We have already seen that other components also very important, dorsiflexion of ankle, flexion at the knee and flexion at the hip. Contraction of anterior tibial hamstrings and tensor fascia lata also occurs. So, here tensor fascia lata also can be occurring in that case. So, this sometimes uh, in examination, examiners may ask if the uh, in, in an amputated leg, how do you elicit? That will be like uh, the tensor fascia lata uh, contraction can be elicitable. Uh, if suppose there is a uh, amputated leg. So, that is not in routine clinical practice, but in diabetic patients and all, that may be useful. Now, equivocal and minimal Babinski, that is very important. Equivocal means there is no uh, response to plantar stimulus. Uh, it may, uh, there will not be a, 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 a plantar flexion or dorsiflexion, both will be absent. So, that occurs when there is uh, weakness of the extensor or uh, of flexors of big toe. Suppose uh, there is uh, uh, like peripheral neuropathy or some lesion at uh, uh, spinal cord which produces extensors of uh, big toes or uh, extensors, extensors of uh, big toe is uh, paralyzed. Then you can get equivocal Babinski. But sometimes uh, patient will be unconscious, diabetes, peripheral neuropathy that also there will not be any response because if there is for completion of a reflex arc we need to have peripheral nerves also that, so that may be absent. Minimal Babinski means if there is no movement of toes the response can be assessed by feeling of for the contraction of tensor fascia later that we have seen uh, in the previous slide and adductors of thigh. So that muscles will contract that can be uh, elicited or if you are not getting a good response, keep the uh, hand on the uh, thighs of the patient, medial part, you can get that response. But clinically, these things are not practical, but examinations, you may get a question like this. Now, Babinski sign is seen in. So, remember Babinski sign is not positive or negative. Babinski sign is present or Babinski sign is absent. That is what we have to write. Okay. Babinski sign is seen in pyramidal tract lesion. So, this is a hardcore sign of pyramidal tract lesion, especially like stroke. Infancy, you can get deep sleep on deep anesthesia, post convulsive states, narcotic overdose, alcoholic intoxication, all these things you can get. So, remember you have to subtract all these things when you are treating a patient. If all these things are not there, then that is a hardcore sign of pyramidal tract lesion. That is very important. Now, alternative methods are there like Chadok sign by stroking the lateral malleus, garden sign, squeezing the calf muscle, applying pressure on the shin of tibia, open him sign, pressure on the fourth toe downwards and then release it with snap. This is Gonda sign, squeezing the Achilles tendon, shuffle sign, flexion of the toes on hook, percussion of the tip of the patient toe with a finger uh, tip, that is Rosalimo sign. So many signs are there, uh, uh, they are uh, alternative for this uh, hardcore sign, but uh, many a times we do not use all these signs. Some doctors they uh, use it, this shuffer sign, using the Achilles tendon, so that you can get similar response. That sign is uh, used by many senior doctors that uh, you can also learn that. But other signs also there, so this picture will tell different methods to elicit this plantar response, but the most common thing is always Babinski response. Babinski response is the most common thing and most of the doctors do that and uh, some doctors prefer to do, do this also. Sheffer sign.
So, this picture shows how to elicit all the signs. Now, we have discussed about one of the important sign in neurology that is Babinski sign. Babinski sign if it is present means uh, that, that there is a major defect in the pyramidal tract, but there are some uh, conditions like deep sleep, deep anesthesia, intoxication, children, very young child, all these things it can be positive uh, without a pyramidal tract lesion. So, we have to be very careful, history is very important and proper trained uh, uh, like uh, method to do this uh, elicitation of this reflex is very very important because if you make small mistake uh, by cross, suppose you cross to the uh, next dermatome like we are told the first toe that area we have to end your stroking. If you cross that area the response will be completely different, you can get a fraction of the toe. So, that should be avoided and many doctors hold the angle joint very firmly that is not required, just support the angle that is enough, if you hold it very firmly like this then the movement will be obstructed by your uh, hand. So, that should be avoided, just support the angle joint that is more than enough, you should not allow the patient to withdraw when you are uh, stroking, that is all is required, just support the angle, stroke it properly, so you get a proper response. And correlate with the clinical findings. Suppose the patient comes with severe alcoholic intoxication and Babinski sign is present, mean that is not a, a sign of pyramidal tract lesion. So, uh, suppose somebody is coming with a uh, one hour uh, right sided weakness uh, and after two days, if you are eliciting this uh, reflex, that will become positive. But remember, in acute stroke also, this may be negative, that is a problem. In patient who is coming with the acute stroke, uh, stroke that is a neuronal shock state, if you are doing this reflex then it will be sometimes negative that does not mean that he is not having a pyramidal tract lesion. Most of these uh, reflexes like uh, exaggerated deep tendon reflexes, pyramidal tract lesion, uh, so like exaggerated deep tendon reflex and uh, Babinski sign all these things may be positive after one or two days in some conditions, but some condition it will be present uh, like uh, they will present very early. Whatever it is, Babinski sign is a hardcore sign of pyramidal tract lesion. Thank you.